Hello and a very good morning. You're watching Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Tina Jha. Let's take a look at the headlines this Saturday morning. Prime Minister to begin five nation tour to Afghanistan, Qatar, Switzerland, United States and Mexico today. Special focus and push for India's NSG membership. Centre creates four categories of LPG dealers to effectively cater to varied needs. Process to appoint 10,000 dealerships under unified guideline also begins. Several candidates elected unopposed to the Rajya Sabha. Union Ministers Piyush Goel and Suresh Prabhu and former Ministers P. Chidambaram and Praful Patel among those elected. France battles severe floods, river scene flows at over 30 year high, forcing thousands to be evacuated. And Leander Pays and Martina Hingis script history. Complete career mixed double slams with win at Roland Garro. In the singles, Novak Djokovic and Andy Murray set up title clash. Serena Williams to take on Garba and Muguruza for the honours. Well, Prime Minister Narendra Modi sets off on a five-nation tour today to Afghanistan, Qatar, Switzerland, the United States and Mexico. The focus of his visit will be to broaden India's trade, energy and security cooperation with these countries. There will also be a special focus on India's membership of the 48-member nuclear suppliers group. The Prime Minister will first travel to Afghanistan where he will inaugurate the Afghan-India Friendship Dam, earlier known as Salma Dam in Herat province. He will also hold talks with Afghan President Ashraf Ghani on a range of issues including the current situation in his country. The Prime Minister will be leaving for Afghanistan tomorrow uh, where he would be inaugurating uh, along with uh, uh, President Karzai, uh, sorry, President Ghani, the Afghan-India uh, Friendship Dam, uh, which was earlier called the Salma Dam. Uh, and uh, after the uh, inauguration, he and President Ghani would be, uh, there would be a lunch hosted by President Ghani. Uh, and uh, then uh, the Prime Minister would be going on uh, later in the evening to Qatar. From Afghanistan, the Prime Minister will travel to energy-rich Qatar and from there he will leave for a two-day visit to Switzerland on Sunday. In Switzerland, the Prime Minister is likely to seek the country's support for India's membership of the nuclear suppliers group. The black money issue is also likely to feature in the talks. We are in touch with the government of Switzerland uh, under the DTA mandate. Uh, and uh, we've had uh, some discussions about this and we do expect... Uh, we have a few more planned uh, in the near future. And there are some, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have received uh, support from Swiss authorities uh, uh, on exchange of uh, information on tax data between the two countries. From Switzerland, the Prime Minister travels to Washington on 6 June. In the US, Modi will become only the fifth Indian Prime Minister to address a joint session of the US Congress. On 7 June, the Prime Minister is scheduled to meet President Obama. Talks between the two will cover the entire range of bilateral ties. President Obama uh, spoke to the Prime Minister and mentioned to him that uh, in, in uh, this year he was inviting uh, uh, some leaders with whom he had an, uh, ex you know, a very close and productive working relationship uh, to visit him. Uh, in the United States. So in many ways you can say it's a sort of a consolidation visit. In the US, the Prime Minister will also meet business leaders and address the US-India Business Council. His last stop will be Mexico where he will hold extensive talks with the Mexican President. India's membership bid at the NSG will figure in this too. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And while the Prime Minister embarks on a five-nation tour today, Vice President Mohamed Havid Ansari has wound up his two-nation tour of Morocco and Tunisia. Now, before winding up his tour, the Vice President called for the need to eradicate global terrorism. In his address at the Tunisian Institute of Strategic Studies, the Vice President also said that India was making relentless efforts to contribute to the development of an equitable and sustainable future to the entire world. 
On the last day of his two-nation visit, Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari addressed the Tunisian Institute of Strategic Studies in capital Tunis. Flagging terrorism as an area of common concern, Vice President Ansari said that global terrorism has emerged as a threat to pluralist and open societies, which can only be defeated by organized international action. Terrorism today has global reach. No city remains safe. There is a new level of threat to pluralist and open societies. Our structures, the old structures of terrorism also remain. There are countries that still use it as an instrument of state policy. There can be no distinction between good and bad terrorists. A terrorist is a terrorist. One who commits crime against humanity cannot have any religion or be afforded any political sanction. Hailing bilateral ties between India and Tunisia, the Vice President said both countries have a similar approach on many issues. He expressed hopes of a prosperous and peaceful future with deepening commercial and political interactions. The Vice President also said that India has a vital stake in the stability, security and economic well-being of West Asia and North African region and was willing to expand its strategic and economic partnership. Our bilateral trade with the region in the year 2014-15 was about $49.58 billion and is expected to grow further despite the economic downturn. We also look to this re region for ensuring our energy security and for commodities like phosphates. This region with its young population and natural resources has tremendous growth potential. It can act as a bridge between three continents of Asia, Africa and Europe. On Thursday, India and Tunisia signed two MOUs on the promotion of handicrafts and information technology after Vice President Ansari and Tunisian Prime Minister held one-on-one -on -one talks. A decision to train 350 Tunisian students in the next five years in India was also taken. Before heading into the talks, the Vice President also visited the Zituna Mosque, the Bardo Museum and the House of Representatives. Vishal Jain and Anu Divan's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And back home, several candidates have been elected on a post to the Rajya Sabha after the process of withdrawal of nominations came to an end on Friday. Union Minister Piyush Goel, former Union Ministers P. Chidambaram and Praful Patel and Shiv Sena's Sanjay Raut were elected on a post from Maharashtra. From Bihar, JDU leader Sharad Yadav, Supreme Court lawyer Ram Jait Malani and RJD chief Lalu Prasad's daughter Misa Bharti were among five candidates declared elected on a post to the Upper House of Parliament. While Railway Minister Suresh Prabhu was elected unanimously from Andhra Pradesh, from Tamil Nadu, four nominees of the ruling AIA DMK and two candidates of the DMK were also elected. However, polling for candidates from Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh will now take place on the 11th of June. Meanwhile, in Karnataka, the controversy over allegations of money power playing a role in the Rajya Sabha elections refuses to die down. The Election Commission has asked the state's chief electoral officer for a report on the matter. The controversy arose after a sting operation conducted by two private TV channels. Now, the BJP has approached the Election Commission on the matter, while a JDS leader has sought cancellation of the polls for Rajya Sabha seats in Karnataka. A sting operation conducted by two television channels on Thursday has set off a political storm in Karnataka. Several legislators were caught on camera talking about money power playing a role in elections to the Rajya Sabha. While the BJP has approached the election commission on the issue, a JDS leader has sought cancellation of polls for four Rajya Sabha seats in the state. It's very unfortunate. It's a blot on the democracy and an uh, um, uh, institution like Rajya Sabha. Personally, I don't feel that such type of candidates should enter the Raj Sabha. I am going to talk to my party leadership today itself. Congress, which is heading the government in Karnataka, has sought to maintain safe distance from the developments, terming them as unfortunate. None of the Congress leaders are involved. See, no doubt, I am uh, looking at the 
uh, keeping my flock together. I am also a part of the system with a lot of friends. But as far as JDS is concerned or other concerned, even the other Congress MLAs who have spoken a various issues, they have looked at the common scenario of the consciences of the independent MLAs. Apart from that, we, none of them have been involved in any financial transactions. Either we have been involved in any financial transactions. Elections are slated for four Rajya Sabha seats from the state on 11th of June. With 45 first preference votes needed to win, the state is witnessing a tough contest for these seats. While JDS, which has 40 MLAs in the Assembly, needs five more votes for its nominee BM Farooq, the ruling Congress, which has 123 MLAs, needs at least 12 votes for its third candidate. Both sides are banking on the support of more than a dozen independent MLAs in the state assembly and this has sparked the controversy. Vishal Dahiya, Rajya Sabha TV, Delhi. And on to some other news, Oil Minister Dharmendra Pradhan has said that the government will appoint 10,000 new LPG distributors this year to extend the reach of clean fuel across the country by 2018. About 2,000 agencies are already in the process of being appointed and the remaining would be completed in the next two phases. At present, there are 27 crore LPG subscribers in the country, of which 16.5 crore are active. There is a reservation category. SC, ST, OBC, physical handicap, sports quota, a serviceman quota. General, this is a vertical 33%. And the Aam Aadmi Party government has decided to call a special two-day session of the Assembly to discuss corruption and mismanagement in the three BJP-run municipal corporations in Delhi. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejdwal expressed concern over the functioning of MCD on Twitter. In his tweet, he said that BJP-run MCD has converted the national capital into a garbage bin due to its corruption and mismanagement. He pressed upon the need for two-day extension to discuss the urgent public issue and the current unsatisfactory state of the city. The decision was taken at a cabinet meeting chaired by Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal at the Delhi Secretariat. The session is scheduled to be held on the 9th and 10th of June. Time for a short break here. Lots more coming up on the other side. This is Kibutu in Arunachal Pradesh, East Point East on the map of India. Kibutu is dangerously close to the Chinese pressure point. In this second episode focused on Indo-Tibetan Border Police Force, we will try to get all the answers as to why this combat army is known as the world's best for jungle and mountain warfare. ITPP का डिप्लॉयमेंट जो है विश्व का सबसे ऊंचा पर्वतों पर डिप्लॉय किया गया फोर्सेस में से है। वॉच नेशनल सिक्योरिटी, ITPP डी सीक्रेट वेपन, ओनली ऑन राज्यसभा टेलीविजन। थैंक्स फॉर स्टेइंग विद आस ऑन ब्रेकफास्ट न्यूज़। ऑन नाउ टू द बिग नेशनल स्टोरी। Mathura remains on the edge even two days after violent clashes claimed 24 lives, including the city SP and an SHO. As many as 368 people have been arrested, but the four main accused who unleashed violence on the police personnel are absconding. UP Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav has admitted to some lapses on part of the administration and also the intelligence network that led to the incident. But questions now remain over how the sect accumulated the huge tranche of weapons without causing any suspicion. An uneasy calm prevails in Mathura. Nearly 48 hours after a violent mob ambushed a group of policemen tasked with evicting people squatting on government land in the Jawaharbagh area. The anti-encroachment drive led to violent clashes on Thursday, leading to the death of 24 people including city SP Mukul Duvedi and station house officer Farah Santosh Yadav. Over 360 people have been arrested and a large cache of arms and ammunition recovered from the site of clashes. The accused will now be booked under the stringent National Security Act. 
the four main accused, however, are still on the run. Kunmilakar Bais Upadravi Jan Gavachuke hai, Jin may say Gyara Ag may Julaskar Mare hai, Wag Junone Hudlagaiti, Jo Logi Raftar Hue hai, Unke Brut and Esela Rane Kilie, Tarai Kijagi, Vishay Shuk say, I say Log Jo is Pure. जो इलीगल एक्टिविटी थी और अराजकता तो थे और पूरा अराजकता फैलाना चाह रहे थे एक्स्ट्रा फोर्सेस हैव बीन रश्ड टू मथुरा एज द सिटी रिमेंस ऑन द एज उत्तर प्रदेश चीफ मिनिस्टर अखिलेश यादव हैज अ शॉर्ट स्ट्रिक्ट एक्शन अगेंस्ट द अक्यूज्ड व्हाइल एडमिटिंग टू सम लैपसेस ऑन पार्ट ऑफ द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन जो घटना हुई उसकी जांच भी हालांकि कमिश्नर स्तर पे जांच की जाएगी और जो दोषी हैं उनके खिलाफ कानून के अंदर कार्रवाई होगी चूक भी है और मैं समझता हूं पुलिस को पूरी बातचीत और तैयारी के साथ उनसे बातचीत भी करनी थी और पुलिस पूरी तैयारी के साथ वहां जाना चाहिए था लेकिन जानकारी में नहीं था कि इतना कुछ उनके पास होगा द सेंटर मीनवाइल हैज सॉट अ डिटेल रिपोर्ट फ्रॉम द यूपी गवर्नमेंट अबाउट द सरकमस्टेंसेस लीडिंग टू द इंसिडेंट एंड आल्सो द रीजंस जो कुछ भी हुआ एक बड़ा हादसा था बड़ी घटना थी और मैं समझता हूं कि उत्तर प्रदेश सरकार इसको इसकी जांच कराएगी और जो भी इसके लिए दोषी हैं मैं समझता हूं कि उन्हें दंडित किया जाना चाहिए मथुरा की जो घटना है और वरिष्ठ पुलिस पुलिस अधिकारी मारे जाना ये बहुत बड़ा एक चूक हुआ है और राज्य सरकार को देखना चाहिए पॉलिटिकल स्लॉग फेस्ट ओवर द इंसिडेंट ऑल्सो कंटिन्यूज विद लीडर्स अटैकिंग द यूपी गवर्नमेंट फॉर नेगलिजेंस तमाम वैसे वेपन्स जो जिनका कोई लाइसेंस नहीं था वो सब उनके पास वहां पर उपलब्ध थे मैं कहना ये चाहता हूं कि उत्तर प्रदेश के मुख्यमंत्री बहुत ही संवेदनहीन गैर जिम्मेदार मुख्यमंत्री का परिचय दे रहे हैं पीपल हु हैव पब्लिकली ऑक्यूपाइड गवर्नमेंट लैंड आर पनिश्ड मर्डरर्स आर ब्रॉट टू बुक and government of akhilesh yadav sappa government which is found sleeping it wakes up from its slumber and take decisive action jabran bhumi hadapne jaisi ghatnaon mein salig log is tarah se police aur prashasan ke sath pesh aayenge ye meri ummeed se bahar ki cheez thi main chahta hu ki doshiyon ke khilaf sakht karwai ho the cause of worry however for the up government is a backlash from the sect they had been occupying the government land in jawahar bagh area for 2 years on the pretext of a dharna the anti encroachment drive by the police came after the allahabad high court recently ordered their eviction with ravindra shuran in mathura bureau inputs rajya sabha tv and prohibitory orders are also in place in several places of haryana ahead of the proposed jart stir who are demanding reservation jart leaders have assured the state government that the protest will be peaceful this time The administration says it is fully prepared to not allow a repeat of the February violence. Prohibitory orders have been imposed in seven districts of Haryana ahead of the proposed agitation by Jats seeking reservation. The protests are slated to begin on June 5 in 15 districts. The call for protests has been given after the Punjab and Haryana High Court stayed the government move to provide reservation under the other backward caste category. पाँच तारीख से जो प्रस्तावित एजुटेशन है उसमें लगभग पंद्रह पॉइंट्स पे धरना देने की बात की जा रही है और प्रशासन ने किसी भी प्रकार की अप्रिय घटना को रोकने के लिए व्यापक तैयारियां कर ली हैं हमने अभी तक लगभग 48 पैरामिलिट्री फोर्सेस की कंपनियां जिसमें आरएएफ, सीआरपीएफ, बीएसएफ, आईटीबीपी उनको अलग अलग सेंसिटिव जगह पर डिप्लॉय कर दिया है इसके अलावा पंद्रह कंपनियाँ हमने और रिक्वेस्ट की है गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया से और वो भी शीघ्र हमें मिलने वाली हैं तो उनको भी अलग अलग जगह पे हम डिप्लॉय करने जा रहे हैं इसके अलावा जितने भी लीडर्स हैं हमने उनसे अनुरोध किया है कि कानून व्यवस्था बनाने में सरकार का सहयोग करें द प्रोहिबिटरी ऑर्डर्स हैव बीन इशूड फॉर सिक्सटी डेज साइबर सेल ऑफ द पुलिस इज मॉनिटरिंग मैसेज इन द सोशल मीडिया In Hisar, police booked an unidentified person under charges of sedition and other offences for spreading rumour about the proposed stir. Khap panchayats have opted out of the proposed agitation. Jhat community leaders have assured the state government they will maintain peace. 
सारे जो जाट लीडर थे उन्होंने ये कहा कि आने वाले अगले डेट तक जुलाई 22 तक इसको डेफर करेंगे और बाद में भी एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन को कोऑपरेट करेंगे और पिछले बार जो जाट आंदोलन हुआ था उसमें यही लोग आके हमें बोले थे कि हमें चार पांच जगह दे दीजिएगा वहीं पे हम बैठ के धरना करेंगे और कहीं और होगा तो ये इन उपद्रवी कार्यों को हम खुद ही मैनेज करेंगे इसी तरीके से हुआ पिछले बार भी इसलिए गुड़गांव में बहुत ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम हुए नहीं थे The Haryana police has cancelled leave of all its personnel except in emergency cases. आंदोलन सरकार पे भरोसा था सरकार ने भी उनसे कहा है कि सरकार कानून लड़ाई चूंकि लड़ाई कानूनी है सरकार के हाथ में नहीं है उसमें थोड़ा समय लगेगा सरकार ने जल्दी अपील के लिए डाली है छह तारीख लगी भी एयरिंग में थर्टी पीपल व किल्ड इन प्रॉपर्टीज विद हंड्रेड ऑफ क्रोर्स ऑफ रुपीज व डिस्ट्रॉयड ड्यूरिंग द फेब्रवरी कोटा एजुटेशन बाई जाट्स ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी न्यूज नाउ फ्रॉम जम्मू एंड कश्मीर थ्री बी एस एफ पर्सनल वकील्ड एंड फोर अदर्स क्रिटिकली इंजर्ड वन टेररिस्ट एम्ब्यूस्ट देर कॉन बॉय नियर बिज बिहारा ऑन श्रीनगर जम्मू नेशनल हाईवे फ्राइडे इवनिंग द इंसिडेंट टू प्लेस अराउंड फोर थर्टी पी एम नियर अ गवर्नमेंट हॉस्पिटल अबाउट फिफ्टी किलोमीटर्स फ्रॉम कैपिटल श्रीनगर द बी एस एफ कॉन बॉय कंप्राइजिंग ट्वेंटी थ्री वहीकल्स वॉज कमिंग फ्रॉम जम्मू टू श्रीनगर फेरिंग जवान्स हु रिटर्निंग टू जॉइन देर ड्यूटीज आफ्टर देर लीव BSF Director General KK Sharma rushed to the spot to, uh, soon after the mishap to take stock of the situation. Additional forces were also rushed to the area which was immediately cordoned off by CRPF and Rashtriya Rifles. So far no terrorist group has claimed responsibility for the attack but the security establishment believes it could be the handiwork of the band Hizbul Mujahideen group. The attack comes barely 10 days after the Hizbul Mujahideen had killed three policemen in two separate incidents in Srinagar city. They are also threatened then to carry out similar attacks in Srinagar. And on to some international news now. The river Seine in France continued to rise on Friday after bursting its banks in several places earlier this week. This forced officials in Paris to erect emergency barriers and close metro stations and museums. The flooded river Seine in Paris rose 6 meters above its normal level on Friday after bursting its banks in several places earlier this week. It's now flowing at over 30 year high levels. Paris's world famous Louvre and Orsay museums were forced to shut down in order to move priceless artworks to safety. D'ailleurs la semaine dernière on pouvait se promener sur les berges, c'était très agréable il y avait un peu de soleil et tout et aujourd'hui euh, c'est inondé c'est c'est impressionnant comment ça peut changer en une semaine une fois les œuvres en ce qui concerne le Louvre ne sont pas aujourd'hui en danger mais il fallait mobiliser les personnels pour pouvoir déplacer les réserves pour pouvoir euh, en fait simplement mettre en œuvre ce plan de prévention qui avait été bien défini et préparé et qui se déroule while the flood is unlikely to submerge the city center residents living near the scene were urged to clean their basements More than 20,000 people have been evacuated in France since the weekend and around 19,000 homes are without power. People could be seen coming together to help those stranded. Soldiers and Red Cross volunteers also helped in moving people from their homes in boats. Or on essaye d'aider les gens pour rentrer chez eux pour les personnes âgées. Là pas longtemps, on a livré le repas pour les personnes âgées. Euh, parce qu'ils sont bloqués car c'est très émouvant. C'est très triste. C'est désolant qu'on puisse pas empêcher ça dans une ville comme Paris et ça met beaucoup de gens dans le dans... French environment minister Ségolène Royal said the Seine's water level continued to rise slowly but that high waters elsewhere in France had started to recede. At least two people have died in the flood so far. More bodies are likely to be recovered as waters recede. de de baisse déjà du niveau euh mais que c'était lent. C'était lent mais bon l'espoir euh, revenait quand même la confiance des habitants euh, était déjà un peu plus positive parce qu'ils voyaient justement la décrue euh, la décrue euh, s'amorcer. Even as the scene flooded higher, it remained well below the record high of 8.6 meters reached in 1910 when thousands of Parisians had to flee flooded low-lying areas of the city. flood waters may still take several weeks to recede after the wettest may in france for 100 years bureau report rajya sabha tv and now to some sporting action
Top seeds Novak Djokovic and Andy Murray will meet in a Grand Slam tight clash for a seventh time on Sunday, while Serena Williams remains on course to win a 22nd Grand Slam with a title clash against Garbai and Muguruza. Some cheer for India as Leander Pace and Martina Hingis wrote their names in record books with victory in the Roland Garo mixed doubles final to complete their career slam. Just the match, Djokovic. Here he is again on the red clay for the fourth time in five years. Novak Djokovic is just one victory away from completing his collection of Grand Slam singles trophies. He put himself back in position to dream big with a complete and commanding 6-2-6-1-6-4 victory over the next generation threat Dominic Thiem in the semi-finals on Friday. On Sunday, the top-seeded Djokovic will now face number two Andy Murray in what seems an appropriately rigorous final exam as Djokovic tries to finish off his 12-year Roland Garro apprenticeship. Murray, long at his best on faster surfaces, is the only man other than Roger Federer to have beaten Djokovic more than once in the past two seasons. Murray already has made tennis history of his own in this waterlogged tournament, becoming the first British man since Bunny Austin in 1937 to reach the singles final at Roland Garros. The Scot got there with one of his finer performances, a 6-4-6-2-4-6-6-2 semi-final victory over Stan Wawrinka, the number three seed and defending champion. In the women's draw, Serena Williams kept alive her hopes of making Grand Slam history in Paris on Friday, but she was again well below her best. In a 7-6, 6-4 French Open semi-final win over Kiki Burton's. For the second straight day, the 34-year-old American looked out of sorts and at times exasperated before finally clawing her way back to stay alive. She will now play Garbine Muguruza in Saturday's final with the prize for her being a 22nd Grand Slam title, equaling the Open Era record set by Steffi Graf in Paris in 1999. The fourth-seeded Spaniard underlined her fine form with a 6-2, 6-4 win over Australia's Samantha Stossa. For Indian fans, Leander Pace completed a career slam in mixed doubles with Swiss partner Martina Hingis with a hard-fought win over compatriot Sanya Mirza and Ivan Dodrig in Paris. The unseeded Indo-Swiss pair squeezed out a 4-6, 6-4, 10-8 win over the second seeds in the summit clash that lasted 1 hour and 28 minutes. By winning the French Open, the duo completed their career mixed double slams. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And that's it from us in this bulletin. Thanks for your time.